Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Persistent Systems Earnings Conference Call for the second quarter of FY22 and it's September 30, 2021. We have with us today on the call Dr. Anand Deshpande, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Sandeep, Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer. Sapre, Executive Director and Chief Officer, the Head Investor. Note: All participants' line will be in the listen-only mode. And for your management, open the call. Please raise the participants on the screen. Please note this call is being recorded by now the friend Palra. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to all of you, depending on where you are joining from. It is good to be with you once again, and we hope all of you are doing well, staying safe and healthy. Before I go to the financial and business updates, I would like to thank you all and our team members and customers for their continued trust in us. This quarter also marks the completion of one year for me as the CEO and about nine quarters as a part of Team Persistent. I'm happy to report the continued progress through this time with yet another strong quarter across all major business metrics. I'll begin with giving you a color on the financial updates. The revenues for Q2 came in at US dollar 182.32 million, giving us a growth rate of 9.3% quarter on quarter and 34% on year on year basis. In rupee terms, this translates into a growth of 9.9% Q on Q and 34.1% Y on Y basis respectively. This is the best Q on Q and Y on Y organic growth delivered by us as an organization yet. Our EBIT for Q2 came in at 13.9%. This translates into an EBIT growth of 12.5% on sequential quarter basis and 53.8% on Y on Y basis. Now let me give you this quarter's performance from an industry segment perspective. On a sequential quarter basis, this quarter's growth was broad-based. It was led by healthcare life sciences industry vertical, which grew by 13.5% on a sequential Q on Q basis, followed by BFSI and software and high-tech segments, which grew by 8.6% and 8% respectively. On a Y on Y basis, all these three segments clocked healthy growth rates with healthcare life sciences growing at 49, 47.9%, software and high-tech at 31.9% and BFSI at 28.7% respectively. Now coming into the order book details for the quarter, the total contract value for the quarter came in at US dollar 282.5 million. The annual contract value component of Q2 is to the tune of 201.1 million in TCV terms. In ACV terms, in terms of new bookings in the quarter, the new business TCV was 149.3 million of which the ACV component was 108.8 million. As you may already be aware by now, these numbers both on TCV and ACV side include all bookings, small and large, renewals, as well as new bookings across existing and new customers. On the people front, we brought in 975 new colleagues, bringing our total employee base to 15,879 at the end of September 2021. The new addition was a healthy mix of lateral hires and fresh graduates, and this should help us continue our growth in the coming quarters. We are happy to report the progress on the utilization side. Utilization for the quarter came in at 82.8%, a 2.7% improvement Q on Q, backed by deployment of a number of our hires over the last few quarters. The attrition for the quarter was at 23.6%, compared to 16.6% in Q1 on a trailing 12 month basis. As you would have observed, attrition has increased across the industry given the shortage of digital skills, coupled with the overall increase in demand. This definitely is a focus area for our management team. We have taken many proactive measures with an aim to bring this under control. To give you some color on a few of the initiatives, we reverted to our normal wage cycle earlier this year in July, just about eight months of having our last pay hike. With the quarter, the current quarter seeing the full impact of the hikes awarded to most of the eligible employees. Sunil will give you more color on the financial impact of this. 
Apart from this, we continue to undertake other measures, including developing our own talent, both from fresher intake and lateral hiring, upskilling, helping our people with long-term career planning with active L&D, learning and development interventions. We also double down on enhancing engagement levels with our employees with a series of global employee events while respecting the social distancing norms, bringing back in-person employee engagement in a major way. Another major highlight for us in the quarter on the employee front was the launch of a broad-based employee stock option plan covering 80% of our total employee base. This is unprecedented in the IT services industry, and we are very proud of the support from our investors and our board of directors. Our employees have been foundational to the company's success, and this significant shareholder returns that we have been able to deliver are on the back of contributions from each one of them. This ESOP will reward them for the resilience they have shown during the last two years and help them participate in the shareholder returns as stakeholders and partners in our growth journey over the next multiple years. There are a few other highlights from this quarter that I would like to share with you. First, on the acquisition side, we have been talking to you about our inorganic strategy over the past several quarters. We have been talking about how we want to go deeper in certain verticals or in service lines or expand in the geographies that we are focused on. I'm happy to report the progress on the same with the acquisitions of SCI Fusion 360 and Shree Partners. We had organized an analyst call to discuss the relevant details post the acquisitions in late September. And here we will just like to refresh everyone's memory on the same. SCI is a North Carolina based company with significant payment domain consulting and implement integration capabilities in North America. While Shree Partners is a New Jersey based company with capabilities in cloud infrastructure and data. The acquisition of SCI deepens our client portfolio and relationships with 10 market leading banks with many of them categorized as among the top 20 banks in North America. The SCI acquisition will be foundational to the dedicated payments business unit that we announced alongside the acquisition and the future expansion in core solutions and applications of a bank's technology architecture. With time, as we integrate SCI, we'll look to see if we can do bolt-on acquisitions to further our foray into different streams in payments and associated areas. She Partners consolidates our position in a strategic account and is a part of a large vendor consolidation deal we won in Q2 with one of our existing customers. Furthermore, SCI helps us extend our footprint in Charlotte, one of the largest banking hubs in the US, while Shree Partners adds a new point of presence for us in the national capital region in India. We continue to scout for and engage with potential targets in our focus areas. We'll keep you posted as we make progress on these over the next few quarters. Now coming to the IP side of the business, we are constantly working to optimize the margins. As a part of this exercise, we have optimized one of our long-standing IP contracts with conversion to a time and material contract. This should help us on the margin side as we go along. Coming to ESG, we continue to make progress on the ESG front. We are working with a leading consulting company on refining our ESG strategy. And by the end of FY22, we'll be release, releasing a comprehensive report on our, our ESG roadmap and the status of our current initiatives against industry standard frameworks on the ESG side. With this, I'll turn the call to our CFO Sunil Safe to give a detailed color on the quarterly financials and related matters. I'll come back after Sunil's comments to give you more details on key client wins, analyst awards, and other recognitions for the quarter. Sunil, over to you. Yeah, hi, thank you, Sandeep, and uh, good evening, good morning to all of you. I hope you're all keeping safe and doing fine. Let me give you some details uh, about the financial performance for the quarter. So the revenue, as uh, you've seen at 182.32 million with a QOQ growth of 9.3% and YY growth of 34%. In terms of INR uh, revenue, it is 13512 million reflecting growth of 9.9% QOQ and 34.1% YOI. On the industry verticals, uh, as Sandeep mentioned, just to refresh those numbers, healthcare grew by 13.5%, BFSI grew by 8.6%, and technology companies grew by 8% on quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. In respect of linear revenue, the offshore linear revenue grew by 12.4%, primarily on account of volume growth of 11.8% and growth in billing rate of 
The on-site linear revenue grew by 6%, comprising a volume growth of 8.9% and reduction in billing rate by 2.7%. This drop in billing rate on-site is due to lower revenue from Europe, essentially due to the seasonality and increase in revenue from Mexico, which has relatively lower billing rates. The number of customers in greater than 5 million category went up by one from 21 to 22, and the number of customers in greater than one to 5 million category went up from 76 to 84. Uh, so far as the acquisitions that Sandeep mentioned about, these were announced at the end of Q2. So just to clarify, this quarter does not include any revenue or cost from these acquisitions, except the uh, cost relating to the due diligence on the uh, companies. As you are all aware, the uh, annual pay hike uh, was done with effect from July. And the impact of this on the margin is 230 basis points. However, the increase in revenue coupled with improved utilization of 2.7% helped us to absorb the impact of pay hike and yet have some small increment to the margin. The utilization improved from 80.1 to 82.8 and with that the gross margin was same at 33.5%. Uh, with the Additional uh, hiring that continued during the quarter, as you would have seen last several quarters, we have added significant number of uh, employees to our account. You have higher recruitment costs, and that's where you will find that so far as GND expenses are concerned, they reflect that higher, increase, uh, higher recruitment costs. That is the main reason for GND expenses increasing almost similar to revenues or slightly higher than revenues. In terms of uh, the overall SG&A, the growth in revenue allowed us to absorb uh, the overall SG&A costs, which came in at 16.9% as against 17.2% in the last quarter. The EBITDA was 16.6% compared to 16.4%. Depreciation and amortization has been in range. It is 2.7% as against 2.8% in the previous quarter, and with that EBIT was 13.9% as against 13.5% in the previous quarter. The treasury income for the quarter was rupees 293 million as against 256 million in the last quarter. And the forex gain was rupees 10 million versus rupees 109 million in the previous quarter. In terms of profit before tax, uh, it was 16.1% at 2176 million. Uh, drop from 16.5% in the previous quarter, essentially because of the lower forex gain. The ETR for the quarter was in range at 25.7% as against 25.5% in the previous quarter. And with that, PAT for the quarter was rupees 1618 million at 12% of revenue as against rupees 1512 million in the previous quarter at 12.3% of revenue. Elevated employee attrition rate, you know, along with increased cost of new hires does pose a challenge on maintaining margins, but there are several margin improvement initiatives being undertaken. The fact that we have been working on utilization improvement, pyramid improvement with the induction of freshers. We have been in conversation with customers on increasing billing rates and customers have been uh, amenable to the discussions and we find that they're receptive to the discussion. We hope to see this effect of all these initiatives coming through in the coming quarters. The uh, ESOP scheme that uh, we have uh, launched to cover a larger, wider section of employees will have an impact of about 70 to 80 basis points. But we believe that the positive outcome it will create from broader participation and the sense of ownership will largely offset this impact over time. The operational capex for the quarter was rupees 1431 million, which includes payment towards new office premises at Hinjewadi Pune of rupees 915 million. Uh, we have also provided a loan of rupees 1880 million, approximately 25 million dollars, to our ESOP trust for purchase of shares from the secondary market. This is to meet the obligations under the ESOP scheme. 
Thus, with this, the cash and current investment on books was is one eight seven zero four million as at thirtieth September, as compared to one nine nine five five million as at thirtieth June. The DSO came in at fifty five days as against fifty four days in the previous quarter, and the cash generation was quite healthy. Forward contracts outstanding as on thirtieth September was about one fifty million at an average rate of rupees seventy six point seventy four per dollar. Thank you all. I uh, wish you a happy Diwali in advance, and I hand it back to Sanjay. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Now let me give you a color on the movement of our customer segments and key client wins from this quarter. So we saw healthy growth across our top account categories. Top one customer grew by eight point six percent. Top two to five by five point nine percent. Top six to ten by three point one percent. And top 11 to 20 customers by 8.1 percent on a sequential quarterly basis. All of this growth, as you would have noticed, is on basis of organic growth, and the acquisitions, as Sunil pointed out, will start you know contributing to the growth from this quarter onwards. Our press release for the quarterly results carries a number of our deal wins across industry segments. Just to highlight a few of these, in the banking, financial services, and insurance segment. we were chosen by a leading global third party insurance administrator to establish a global technology center to deliver enterprise wide digital transformation this is an existing customer and one of the largest proactive deal wins in our recent history including vendor consolidation as a part of the deal the tcv of this exceeds 50 million dollars over 5 years we were chosen by a us government and health savings facilitator to build and enhance a government savings platform to provide competitive advantage and accelerate revenue growth on the healthcare life science let me highlight two of the wins the first win is with a contract research organization to aggregate clinical data sources in microsoft azure based data lake and the second win is with a leading us healthcare provider to develop a patient engagement platform using leading no code low code platform based solution software high tech and emerging technologies segment as well saw some good deal wins we were chosen by a leading provider of employee engagement solutions to migrate its product from legacy platform to aws and enhance the product roadmap similarly we were chosen by a leading tax preparation and financial technology provider to transform and modernize its cloud based product now moving to the awards and recognitions for the quarter q2 saw us get continued recognition from industry leading analyst firms and associations to mention a few Forbes Asia named us on its best under a billion list, which highlights 200 Asia Pacific public companies under a billion dollars in revenue, with consistent top line and bottom line growth. This is the first time we have been included in this list, and we are very proud of this recognition. For the seventh consecutive quarter, we were named a top 15 sourcing standout for managed services in Q3. 2021 Global ISE Index, booming 15 category. ISE also named us as a leader in traditional archetype of outsourcing for hybrid cloud deployments and private cloud in the archetypal report 2021 for ISE provider lens next generation private slash hybrid cloud services and solutions. In summary, we delivered yet another strong quarter. We continue to see good traction for our services in the markets we serve, and we remain confident of our growth journey going ahead. With this, I would like to conclude the prepared comments. i would like to request the operator to open the floor for question answers operator over to you thank you very much sir we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may raise your hand from the participants tab on your screen participants are requested to use headphone or earphones while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles First question is from Mr. Mohit Jain. Yeah. Um, hi, sir. First was on account of onsite billing rates. While you alluded in the opening remark that it is probably on account of Mexico, uh, but what I wanted to check was if you look at last four or five quarters, uh, onsite billing rate is more or less steady. Some quarters it is up, some quarters it is down. so how should we read it like clients are really uh, willing to give you uh, a higher rate and we should expect it to trend up over the next 3 4 quarters or do you think it will more or less remain stable with some delivery moving to mexico or other places if, if that is included 
Sunil, you want to go ahead? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll uh, give uh, my perspective on that and you can add. Uh, you know, Moif, what is happening in this situation is that, that we are also, as we have talked earlier, looking at this near shore delivery. So, so far as on-site billing rates are concerned, earlier they used to be only concentrated between US as our footprint in Europe has been small. But over a period of time, we have been working on Europe business. So now you can say US, Europe is the more uh, critical mass of that on-site footprint. Now, over the last few quarters, say three or four quarters, we have been working on adding Mexico, Canada as the near show delivery and few other pockets we have where we already have footprint like Malaysia and so on. So I would not read too much into this. We would only uh, ensure that there is not too much of volatility. And this time, the main uh, reason for this, as you know, uh, the Europe business uh, contribution has been slightly lower this quarter. And the main reason for that being the vacation period in Europe. And post-COVID, there has been a bit of opening you know, globally. And this is a time when people have been able to take vacations after a longer period. So we have lost certain billing days over there because of which the Europe billing rates being higher, it has put further pressure on the on-site billing rates as a number that you see uh, going down. So Sandeep, any further? Right. And, and at a Uber level, if you look at it, there is no pressure on the US billing rates downwards or Mexico billing rates downwards, etc. So the mix is changing. And as we go ahead, as the you know US travel opens up, next month and similarly the other you know regions like canada mexico etc open up bigger we do have plans to go bigger in terms of our presence in canada in us in mexico and we are seeing a good receptiveness for near shore canada and mexico from our us customers perspective so you will see those numbers go up over a period of time in terms of volume in terms of value as i said before the mix may change so your average dollar value may change but there is no negative pricing pressure on that so second was on the TCV where they've reported, uh, you mentioned $50 million deal is probably included in the TCV reported for the quarter. But there are also some companies reporting higher ACV and lower TCV kind of a scenario. Do you guys also, or are you also observing such a trend where larger deals are drying up and smaller deals are sort of picking up? Look, the nature of business for us versus, you know, some of our bigger peers may be slightly different. If we were to, you know, be in the infrastructure business or, you know, typical application support business, the number of deals in three to five years is much higher. The kind of business that we do, it is more digital in nature and where, you know, the number of those deals are lesser and the deals may happen in the one to three years period more, three to five years may be lesser and then they may get renewed with different scope and so on and so forth. So we are seeing a very healthy demand. Demand-wise, we are not worried. The TCV may be slightly different for us given the nature of our business. So in our case, TCV reflects or it is a fair representation of revenue growth ahead. Yeah, it is. And okay. we are confident Thank if you look at it, you know, if we were in the project business, we have now delivered, I think, six plus quarters of sequential healthy growth. Right. If it was project-based, it would wobble. So we are fairly confident. What we are doing is a longer term, you know, play. And it's a good mix of short to medium to longer term deals. So it, we are we are happy with the deal profile. Perfect. Sir. Thank you. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Mr. Sandeep Shah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, congrats on a stellar performance quarter after quarter. Uh, Sandeep, just wanted to understand, uh, in this demand scenario, which is high, also has a benefit of some bit of uh, uh, the pent-up demand. So, do you believe that your TCV wins, which is consistent now between $250, $300 million a quarter, can continue even beyond FI22, where we may see some amount of normalization of IT spend, or you don't believe in this uh, trend of pent-up demand being there? It's largely a transformation demand which is driving the growth across sector. So, Sandeep, uh, good question. So, let's let's go a little deeper into this. The segments we play in, you know, on one side we have the enterprise side, whether it is healthcare, life sciences, whether it's banking, financial services. So, there are those enterprise digital transformation programs, and a number of those are long range programs. On the other side, we are also significantly, you know, playing in the product development side, where we are playing 
in the ISV slash tech company ecosystem. Now, a number of those are also impacted by people like private equity players. If you look at it, the dry powder, the committed money to private equities, which is not yet put to use, is at an all-time high right now. Similarly, the VC funding is, you know, the amount of money available is at an all-time high right now. A number of that will be called over the next, you know, two to three years, if not more. So what we are seeing is a structural demand, whether it is enterprise, whether it is product companies that, you know, provide the tools, for the enterprise transformation. So as far as we are concerned, for the segments we service, for the industry segments or the technology segments, we believe this is a multi-year segment, multi-year play, and this should continue for the next at least two to three years, if not more. So from a demand perspective, we are confident that this demand is here to last for the next many years. Okay, great. And uh, second, just uh, in terms of new restructuring, which you said in your opening remarks related to IP, uh, will it be effective starting from 3Q or it may be slightly uh, ahead of that? And uh, one can assume this will have a positive impact in the gross margin. And when you say converted to time and material, is it fair to say from an IP uh, classification, it may be classified now as a services business? Yes. So, the answer to most of what you said is yes. So the timing is basically from 4Q for us, one calendar, first calendar quarter of next year. And as far as we are concerned, now it will move from IP bucket to time and material. The revenue may be slightly lesser, but the gross margins may be much better. So that is the overall impact there. And it should be you know positive in the medium to longer term, both revenue and uh, you know the gross margins, because we have enough demand to be able to redeploy any people that may be impacted or whatever else. Okay. And just the last question uh, uh, to Sunil, sir. Uh, if you look at the headwinds, uh, this uh, starting from Q3, Q4, we may have the inorganic pressure uh, of, on the margins plus uh, additional ESOP cost. But uh, you still believe there are tailwinds. So is it fair to say Q2 margins can be maintained on a going forward basis? And in 2Q, is there any non-recurring expense or any non-recurring reversals uh, in the p &L? Yeah, Sandeep, uh, there is no one-off uh, in Q2 except uh, you know for the small uh, M&A related expense. But that's very small amount in terms of the overall uh, transaction that we have. The uh, headwinds and uh, levers that we are working on, uh, the whole idea is to ensure that uh, we are able to attract best talent, right? engage with them. As you know, so far as attrition is concerned, it is not just one-time pay hike that uh, impacts the P&L. It is also the replenishment cost, which comes in at higher cost because of the situation we have in the industry. So as a company and uh, all our peers, you would find I've been working on balancing this with uh, significant addition of pressures to the system. Just about a year ago, nobody would have wondered, I mean, thought the demand scenario is going to be so good and people could have actually onboarded much more pressures earlier, but that didn't happen. So as an industry uh, kind of a situation, when more pressures get uh, deployed, I'm sure over say next two, three quarters, which is a time that is required to make those people, you know, uh, you can deploy them on projects. This should uh, help, but one or two quarters more stress will be there. And that's the time when we have to put all the levers to use to ensure that at least margins don't go south, right? The imp improvement in margin will take a little while to come because of this uh, scenario we are in. And we are also growing very fast. So we do need to carry the capacity for growth. While we have worked on the utilization from uh, 80.1 to 82.8, uh, we feel that 83-84% in near term is what we would target, not something at much higher level because of the growth that we have to fulfill. I hope okay. that's your answer. So directionally, we can maintain the margins at Q2 level? Yeah, so directionally, yes. we will say we will be in the 16-17% to 17 band. That is our attempt. While, you know, continuing to grow very well. So that is the band you should expect and growth is our focus. Okay. Thanks and all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Mr. Nitin Padmanabhan. Yeah. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Uh, uh, great quarter. 
a uh, couple of quick questions one is um, i think there was an impairment of uh, 74 million and we saw a similar kind of number last quarter as well um, is this uh, um, is this likely to continue in the next quarter or this we have already had two quarters so is it likely to end uh, the second question was on the ip business um, so obviously there are a lot of end of life products in there uh, uh, do you think this will be uh over the years it'll be a gradual sort of uh, you know uh, decline there or do you think that there is scope for uh, uh step drops uh, if you think take a longer term view on that mm, um uh, and 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 in relation to that i think we have seen uh, the effort in the ip business sort of improve over the last two quarters was a multiple quarters of declines that we have had uh, so how should we actually uh, think about it and finally on the new eso plan uh how are you actually um, thinking about this uh, one philosophically is it uh, over and above is it part of potential salary increases that you are thinking about as total comp or this is over and above in terms of philosophically sort of sharing wealth uh, and is there any impact in the current quarter and do you see further impact going forward thanks so if you can talk about the impairment i'll take the rest yeah sure sir Uh, so i think uh, this uh, impairment uh, is kind of done with now uh, there is no further impact that you need to expect right on the other side the it business uh, i think it will be stable to you know maybe a slight growth for some time and then maybe decline over a long tail so whatever decline had to happen in a bigger way i think it is behind us we have you know seen stability in that and uh, we are also repurposing the it to do derivatives etc and so on so we are relatively confident will be flat marginal increase in the shorter run decline gradually in the longer run so no no worries on that as far as the esop plan is concerned look here is what has happened and why we did the esop so we have grown very well over the last 6 7 quarters as all of you who follow us very closely would have observed now with that we have seen a significant amount of shareholder value creation that has happened now our employees who are the people behind the shareholder value creation in our all our employee town halls have been requesting participation in this and it is only fair that we take them along as we create value for our stakeholders because of the efforts of all our employees so that is where we took our investor approval we took our board of directors approval and we did this you know fairly encompassing 80% of our employees are covered or will get covered in the next few months as they get eligible under this esop plan so this is to make sure we are basically creating an environment in which we are sharing wealth that our employees create for our stakeholders with them it also helps us on the other side make our employee value proposition much stronger so far persistent employee value proposition has been good brand good work culture good employee orientation good content of work so if you want to work on the latest technology in a very friendly environment which is very employee friendly come to persistent and we are the you know best tech services company from a niche service provider perspective now with this it is not basically this that it is a part of our core compensation so core compensation will still remain very competitive all the other things that i talked about will remain there and this isra plan will be a small thank you wealth generation for the effort that they do and they help us create wealth for our shareholders so overall we believe this should also help us in retention over a period of time manage you know attrition over a period of time and so it will be beneficial for our employees our investors our customers and nine yards of our stakeholders so that was the philosophy behind the entire esop and we are pretty sure in the shorter run it may cost us a bit but in the medium to longer term it will be value accretive for our investors as well so that is the story behind the esop that we have done. a great helpful this one uh, uh, sort of uh, clarification to uh, sunil sir is uh, uh, over the last two quarters our uh, stock comp has been roughly 1.4% of revenues uh, do you think as this kicks in it'll replace some of that uh, uh, to a certain degree and that number should sort of come off uh, uh, that's the last from my side thank you no you are right actually the stock comp expense would stay in that range of uh, 1.5% it's not uh, the time that great thank you so much and all the very best sure. thank you thank you next question is from mr manik taneja hi thank you for the opportunity uh, sandeep you made a statement about the restructuring of a large uh, ip contract into a tnm uh, uh, into tnm billing going forward if you could elaborate on that front and how that helps in terms of profitability improvement 
that's question number one the second uh, was a much more broader question uh, which is true not just for persistent but for broad industry as well while over the last 18 months we've seen a significant increase in offshore uh, delivery of revenues and typically what one uh, one used to see was that as offshore proportion of business used to increase our utilization rates used to essentially moderate but in the current environment what one has seen is that the utilization has continued to 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 record to make new highs so what's driving that is this the underlying demand momentum because of which utilization continues to be very sticky and high that's uh, that's the second part of the question and also are you seeing customers looking at uh, looking at more innovative engagement models as they get used to uh, greater work being delivered offshore thank you Okay, so I'll try and keep these brief because we have 25 minutes left. Uh, so, on the IT side, look here is where it is. We the one of the largest contracts that we had. You know, it was basically to be renewed in five-year charts. So, and since we had seen depressed margins in that, we requested understanding from our customer, and you know, we have converted that to a TM. What that means is it'll become a services contract rather than a revenue share contract. And in a revenue share contract, our margins were getting depressed because the revenue on the product was not necessarily, you know, growing that heavily. Now, in terms of the revenue impact and so on, without you know going into too many details, it will basically take our revenue down to maybe about 40-45% of what it was. And at the same time, the margins will become equal to the company gross margins for whatever business it is. So, on a margin perspective, it will definitely be more accurate. On the growth perspective the revenue profile we don't expect an impact on this because today honestly we are hurting on the people side if we had a thousand more people today and anyone who's in listening to this call and wants to be an equity hire we are happy to do that so any people that come off of this contract we can easily redeploy them without missing a heartbeat so from a revenue perspective not going to impact margin perspective going to be a credit so it's good for us good for the customer good for our employees so from that perspective that that is the story on the ip contract restructuring now you talked about the offshore utilization look we have been traditionally in the range of 78 to 80 percent offshore utilization we have cranked up the liver a little bit higher because obviously we are also in the same industry facing the same you know headwinds where we have you know issues whether it is attrition whether it is salary increases etc and you know a lot of our investors and people like you want us to maintain a healthy margin profile. So in order to make sure that we are doing that prudently, we have cranked the engine. We had hired a number of people. Roughly, we have had 5,000 people over the last four quarters. So we have taken the you know utilization a little higher as we have been able to train and deploy the people. We are not cranking the utilization to the levels of 88, 89% that some of our biggest peers are doing. We are happy, as Sunil said, maybe doing another percentage or two at max. And we will be in this range so that we are able to bring in the kind of you know technical people that we need as additional team members as we go along with time and have a healthy pipeline to back up the growth that we intend to have so that's the thing on offshore utilization on the customers innovative engagement models look there are definitely discussions that happen with customers on different models whether it is fixed paid programs whether it is you know taking over support for many years in different different you know business models but again, one has to be prudent in doing those business models. As we have seen, some of these IP contracts can be, or revenue sharing contracts and innovative business models can be tricky. So where it makes prudent sense, we will definitely engage and we are seeing those discussions. So I will stop with that and happy to answer any questions uh, you know, offline on this. Appreciate those inputs. Thank you. And all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Mr. Rahul Paliwal. So congratulations to the management, first of all, for taking this industry leading initiative to share the wealth with the most important stakeholders, which is their employees. Um, I'm sure it will have a boomerang Im impact, you know, in, in terms of profitability and uh, stickiness to the organization. So uh, Congress to Anand and the team and <clears throat> Sandeep to you. So my question is um, uh, around when I compare with the peers of uh, the margin front, uh, we are lagging almost since 2015. Uh, why this is the gap since so long and uh, and when the demand scenario is such high, uh, how soon we can catch up with the peers? That's the question, sir. 
so look on the margin front uh, yes we when you compare us with the bigger peers there's a delta but if you were to compare with our competitors who's the competitor for persistent let's let's look at it we are competing with the epam globent and dava and the likes so if you look at that profile of you know companies that we compete with and then maybe in some places we compete with niche providers some places we may compete with the larger peers now if that is the competition if you look at our margins versus that you know set of cohorts we are pretty much in line if you were to study any of these competitors now do we desire to go up from here absolutely our answer to you would be give us next you know 6 to 8 quarters as we build the company to scale there is a number of things that will not proportionately scale from a cost perspective there will be a bigger leverage of sgnda there will be a bigger leverage of many other fixed costs or you know the proportion in which they will increase will not necessarily be in the proportion that our revenue will increase and with that you know our aspirations definitely are over the next 6 8 10 quarters to go up by 100 150 basis points on the margins but it will take us time to go there so definitely we have the eyes on the ball growth comes first with the growth margin will kind of follow so have some patience we'll get there sooner than later thank you sir and all the best thank, thank you. you next question is from mr dipesh mehta yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity a uh, couple of question first about the margin Uh, earlier, I think uh, Sunil made a comment about 16 to 17 percent of EBITDA margin. So, just want to get sense about it is after considering both the exact kind of thing, retention related cost, which we need to absorb plus ESO, and on EBIT there would be only incremental would be the amortization. That is how uh, right to percent from margin projective perspective for next couple of quarters. Uh, second question is about the uh, overall hiring and pressure related thing. How we uh, look pressure intake plan for the next few quarter? If you can share some number about how we look pressure intake and whether it can act as a margin lever for FY23, considering uh, pyramid rationalization related. Thank you. Sunil. Yeah, Dipesh. Uh, so, in terms of uh, your uh, question, uh, I'll answer in two parts. One is with respect to the immediate uh, near future, and uh, then as we go along in the next financial year. So, if you see the acquisitions that we have announced, uh, when we had announced the acquisitions, we had mentioned about the fact that both the acquisitions are actually accretive at gross margin level, and so far as the uh, Retention payouts and the money that gets amortized that will have you can say some impact happening at the EBITDA and EBIT level. But overall, this will uh, not have a huge impact. I would say in the next uh, two quarters, it could have an impact of thirty to forty basis points, which we have to manage from various other angles. Uh, over the longer term. Yes, uh, we have to work on these acquisitions, integrate them well, create synergy revenues, and do a whole lot of those things to ensure that this is really not a worry for us to manage the amortization charge, which comes out of the intangible amortization. And in uh, terms of the ESOP uh, thing, it will happen as we go along. I don't think, as I mentioned earlier, the overall expense uh, will not be of a, you know much different. percentage to revenue it is will remain in that 1.5 percent kind of a bank on the fresher intake uh, we will target somewhere between 2500 to 3000 freshers over the next one year so if i look one year from now that is the number that we are looking at and obviously we have to execute on that and then train and deploy and thank you next question is from mr hardik sangani hardik please unmute and ask your question okay next question is from mr nagendra morya hi sir good evening and uh, congratulation on great quarter I have just a uh, small question regarding the uh, employee cost. Uh, if it is, uh, you told uh, there was a hike in uh, salary during the July itself, 
and uh, if you see the ratio of the cost to revenue is more or less similar about 60% uh, kind of ratio so do you think uh, with from the next upcoming quarter with the novelization of uh, uh, attrition the revenue with this cost ratio about 60% would go up or it will be remain in the same level that is one question and second thing second question on the 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 revenue goal or your vision you shared about 1 billion revenue goal of target so what is the timeline of this uh, revenue goal and what additional efforts uh, company is doing to achieve this goal thank you so now if you can take the first i'll take the second yeah sure sir so you uh, you know what you mentioned about the employee cost as percentage to revenue that's a uh, a very important direct cost that all of us always uh, have a eye on to ensure that we are optimizing to the best extent possible so as you would have seen over the last several quarters like sandeep talked about we added significant number of employees and when we have such a significant growth from 10 and a half thousand to about 15800 today along with the uh, and managing the attrition part of it there is a significant uh, investment that we have done to build the learning and development and the deployment kind of a uh, you know a framework to ensure that we get the best uh, you can say talent available to our customers having said that the percentage of cost to revenue is a dynam uh, you can say a mix of three things one is the on site offshore uh, ratio of the business the second is the utilization and third is within the utilization whether you are able to have a fair mix of lateral versus pressures so directionally yes the whole idea about improving uh, overall ebitda margin in the earlier question that we talked about comes out of improvement in gross margin and also improvement by spreading the sg and a over a wider revenue base so it is hard to predict these things because attrition is something that is evolving and how much uh, attrition gives additional cost for the same capacity you know to be replenished is a factor that is not in our control but uh, you can be rest assured that all of us are working very closely to ensure that this you know is optimized to the best extent mm-hmm. sure so on the billion dollar plan our eyes are absolutely set on that it is line of sight for us and if you look at it at 182.3 million dollars that gives us a run rate of roughly about 730 million dollars over the past 5 to 6 quarters we have been going 6% plus in cqgr terms and if we look at it uh, you know next 6 to 8 quarters is where our ambition would be to hit the billion dollar mark now this would come from mostly organic growth there will be some inorganic part to it like we announced the acquisitions of sci and chic you know partners we are looking at multiple different acquisitions as well but these are more capability acquisitions whether it is in the cloud space or security or data or sales force and you know we are confident of the combination of organic initiatives the larger deals that we have been doing going deeper into service lines going deeper into partnerships etc a number of these things are panning out well for us as you would have seen over the last you know sequential quarters that we have been so we are reasonably confident next 6 to 8 quarters we should be able to reach our vision and then you know obviously it is an evolving vision when we are at 1 we will target 3 when we are at 3 maybe we will target 5 or 10 so it's an evolving thing and we are confident of delivery thank you for answer just one quick quick question on the travel cost side uh, it was like 2 3% all percent of the revenue earlier but current covid time it has gone down so how you see up in the upcoming quarter travel cost will pick up See, the travel has started opening up it is already some small amount of 10 15 basis points in fact it has already had in this q2 itself and we expect that uh, trend to be like that so if you take about 2 to 3 quarters from now if nothing materially changes then uh, it will have an incremental impact of about 15 20 25 basis points per quarter it may move in that range but uh, today it is little hard to predict but you are right over a period of next 3 4 quarters we should be uh, seeing travel coming to about 2/3 of where it used to be 
ఓకే థ్యాంక్ యూ ఫర్ ఆన్సర్ అండ్ ఓకే థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ నెక్స్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ ఇస్ ఫ్రమ్ అభిషేక్ సింధన్కర్ hi uh thanks for the opportunity and congrats on a solid execution a uh, couple of questions the first thing is conversion of uh, that ip contract into time and material would that uh end the seasonality that we have generally in q3 uh i i i am sure you said it will happen from next year so we'll have this seasonality probably in this time uh the second is more on the mix of geography uh you know india uh, is almost now at a higher mix than europe so you know what is driving this business and uh, you know what is probably not uh, you know working in europe uh, if you can just elaborate that uh, that could be helpful and just a follow up to that is india business historically uh, uh, you know the hypothesis is the dso's are a little higher uh, any anything that we should be aware of uh, from a dso standpoint thank you for taking my questions sure so let me try and answer that so the conversion of the ip contract to tnm the seasonality look the seasonality wise october november december quarter is the highest in that particular contract or overall ip business that we do and uh, january february march which happens to be q4 is the lower side so every alternate quarter is the pattern that we see so from that perspective uh, you know this quarter it is continuing the way it is in october november december the restructuring is effective january so from that perspective you should look to not have the major ups and downs beyond that and uh, we had more or less as a company if you look at it last q4 we had overcome that any which way so that should answer your question on seasonality and it is all positive for us the other side of it the india business being higher mix than europe so in india what has happened for us is this our capabilities on certain service lines including so you know service lines like salesforce or our engagement with financial services customers that's what is driving the revenue up. and it's a healthy revenue that we are seeing in the bfsi segment that i talked about and again you know some of the other customers which are multinationals their indian arms and so on so that is the positive side of it now dso's i don't think it is impacting us if you look at it our dso we have been able to thankfully manage it because of our team's efforts very well i think we are at a very healthy clip in terms of dso's they are at 55 if we were to not look at the unbuilt part and even with unbuilt part it's fairly healthy now what is not working in europe i would not say what is not working in europe the last quarter as sunil pointed out it was impacted because of vacations etc otherwise we would have seen some amount of good growth there as well now can we do better in europe that is the question i would not say what is not working i would say how do we work better in europe and we have stated very clearly as we look to our billion dollar goal we wanted to be 12 to 15% instead of the you know 8.5 to 10% swing that we see in europe and we are at it both organically and inorganically the team is focused and over a period of next you know several quarters we hope to have that situation change in a positive manner and we'll keep reporting on that so that is the thing about you perfect thank you for taking my questions thanks abhishek thank you next question is from madhu babu yeah hi sir uh, sir at least the perceived premium of the sector has increased in the last two years the perceived importance so what is stopping us on the price hikes i mean because even the inflation has been substantial for us even not this sector across other industries also input costs are increasing even in other sectors as well so what is stopping on the price hikes when your you know all time high demand as well as most uh, the perceived importance has reached a new high for it services thanks so madhu babu the there is nothing stopping us from price hikes see it is like this the customers today understand it. they are very empathetic but in customers organization there is an organization called procurement whose job is to make sure that you know they are controlling the costs and nobody likes to pay more even though they may be empathetic to you nobody likes to pay more and you know these things have to be done when the contracts are up for renewal so one is a sequencing issue you just can't go arbitrarily and ask for pricing increases you know customers some customers will not like it some customers may still you know work with you so we are as we have the contracts coming up for renewals we are working with them and you know we are hopeful of as you rightly said demand is high whatever issues we are facing in india is global issues i don't think it is you know relegated only to india only to services companies so i'm pretty hopeful as we go along this will happen and we are seeing pricing 
related positivity in newer contracts and even in renewals so it may take a little bit of time but it will you know happen it will happen in the right direction okay so thanks and all the best thank you uh, we will take one question per participant as we have less minutes in hand now next question is from girish pai yeah um, sandeep i had a question on uh, on the margin guidance uh, in the media interview you gave in the morning you kind of meant said that you're looking at a 100 basis point improvement in margins over the next 2 to 3 2 to 3 years it seemed fairly conservative to me because uh, sitting 12 months back you were saying that a bit margins would be in that 12 12.5% kind of region and today you're sitting at 13.9 so are you being uh, ultra conservative on the margin front uh, uh you see could this be going up significantly uh, as you see serious traction in your revenues so so gish there is two things there number one look we are building the company for the longer run we are hunkered down if we can do the margin improvement next quarter rest assured we will do it but the point is if you ask us for a forward looking guidance we have to give you a guidance that is you know practically doable while we will give it our effort to do it in the shorter term so the fact that you know we said whatever we said on the ebit and we are delivering much better than that should give you the confidence that we are focused on growth we are focused on operational improvement our profitability has so far if you look at the operational improvement it has outpaced the revenue improvement that we have done so rest assured if we can do it better faster we will do it but from a guidance perspective look we don't want to guide something that we can't live up so we are at it if we can do it faster despite the challenges that are there in the industry we will do it there's nothing stopping us from doing it but if you ask us to commit to something it will take us that much more time okay uh, sandeep just one question more if, if i can squeeze this in what i see is uh, two sets of tier 2 companies uh, like yours which are giving a tcv number and there is a growth coming through and there are companies in the tier 2 side which are not giving a tcv number but showing very strong growth so i'm just trying to understand the nature of business coming your way are these like really really small contracts which do not appear in the tcv which are a string together strung together so to speak and therefore you know you see this growth in those companies where the tcv numbers are not being being given uh, what are you seeing on the ground why are those companies not giving those tcv numbers look uh, i don't control those companies so i can't say why they give or they don't give we try to give you as much transparency into our system as we can and is practically possible and as far as we are concerned our contracts are with reasonable size companies with the companies that we want to work with the contracts are increasing in size so we are happy with the kind of contracts that we have and and the proof of the pudding is nobody can grow sequentially for six quarters if you are doing shorter contracts and they finish and then you are digging newer wells to find you know newer sources of revenue so there are some which are shorter term some medium term some long term contracts a healthy mix of all of this and that's where we have been able to sequentially you know give the growth that we have and if you look at year on year growth 34% growth doesn't come on back of smaller contracts stuck together it definitely needs a lot of good work to be done to get sequentially from you know last quarter was 27% this quarter is 34% so we are happy with the kind of contracts we have made good progress if we can keep on this progress i think as a company and as a team we'll be very happy with this Out thank you very much thank you next question is from ruchi burde congratulations on uh, excellent execution uh, my question is on pricing again uh, in the prepared remarks sunil mentioned that clients today are more receptive for pricing uh, discussions so are these uh, conversations uh, of equal ease for fixed pay contract and uh, tnm engagement and if not is it fair to imply that the margin pressure is relatively more acute in the fixed pay uh, engagement versus tnm so so i'll keep it short we have one minute left in the call so look a significant amount of our work is on the tnm side and customers are willing to look at that as far as the fixed pay is concerned it's more of the it business and that's any which ways we control my question is specifically for it services uh, uh. yeah so and it services if you look at it we have a fairly healthy margin on it except for a few contracts which we have basically said we are optimizing so no concerns there the margins there are more than the company average 
So moderator, I think, uh, you know, let me get to the final comments yes. and then we will close the call because we are at end of the call. Yes. So we sincerely appreciate all of you taking time and joining us for the call today. We would like to thank our 15,500 plus team members, customers, partners and investors for their support in our growth journey. We are bullish about our prospects for the future. We look forward to connecting back with you in the next three months to provide an update on our ongoing progress. And we wish you all good health and a very happy Diwali and season's greetings. Thank you. Auditor, you may close the call. Thank you very much to the Persistent Management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Persistent System Limited, that concludes today's conference. Thank you for joining us. And you may now disconnect your lines and exit the webinar. Thank you. Thank you.